Digital citizenship is rising as a topic for conversation in classrooms and school sites all over the world. As connectivity and collaboration increase, so do the responsibilities of students to act responsibly and respectfully online. But let's be honest, these aren't new expectations. When students step out onto the playground, we expect them to move with caution and include all their peers in play. Why would our expectations change when bringing them to the digital playground? There are eight themes of digital citizenship that we will touch on. The first theme is internet safety. In simplest terms, this refers to all users protecting their personal information while online. From protecting your identity to your internet connection, this theme brings to light the importance of keeping you and your computer safe from viruses, hackers, and online predators. The second theme is privacy and security. This dives deeper into the idea of internet safety, but it brings to light the role that each user plays in protecting their identities. Thinking about the safety of your passwords and keeping your information private is really important. In fact, the U.S. government has stated that the privacy of anyone under 13 is protected by federal law, and that's why users must be 13 to participate in any sort of open social networking. The third theme moves into digital relationships and communication. Again, think about the expectations of students in the classroom and out on the yard. Students understand that certain words, phrases, and volume are appropriate at certain times. The same goes for digital communication. In fact, choosing their words carefully in the digital world is even more important because the words and images they create will last forever. So we aim to help them understand the way to react to others in digital settings and how to protect, present themselves in the best way. The fourth theme is cyberbullying. This is really focused on thinking about when re digital relationships and communication go bad. Remember, this isn't a one-time offense, but rather it's the persistent harassment of others in a digital realm. Online messages and images can cause pain and fear, and we need to help users understand the impact of their choices. The fifth this theme is the idea of having a digital footprint and reputation. Like we mentioned, words and images posted online last forever, and together with our with our other internet activity, come together to form our digital footprint. Being aware of your digital footprint is step one. Even by just Googling yourself, you'll find out how you are presented to the World Wide Web. Students need to remember that their behavior now is already building their digital reputation, and they should proceed with caution. The sixth theme is the idea of self-image and identity in the digital age. We often overlook the impact that media has on shaping our view of ourselves and others. Users need to see the difference between digitally enhanced photos versus ones that are not, and also realize that they have the ability to present themselves and others based on the images and words they choose. The seventh theme is information literacy, which is the ability for a user to understand when information is needed and how to go about getting the information determining if it's accurate, and using it appropriately. Information is so readily available that our job as educators has changed from knowing all to helping students decipher all. Empowering students to search appropriately and honor their sources is a step in the right direction. Finally, the eighth theme is creative credit and copyright. Each user has a right to protect his or her creative work, Therefore, we need to help emphasize the importance of copyright and Creative Commons licenses, as well as the differences between quoting and summarizing a source. As you can see, this topic is deep, and we're just starting our journey down this path. As you continue to dive into digital citizenship as a topic, I urge you to think introspectively about your role as teacher. And remember that sometimes the best teaching we can do is modeling the expectations ourselves. As always, you are not alone.